Hey everyone, thank you for joining us. Today I have five ways to get you instantly better at Fortnite. If you think about these and implement them into your game plan, there is no way you won't at least improve a little bit. Some of these are going to be a little bit weird or obscure and you probably haven't heard them all before, so I urge you to stick with me and let me get my point fully across before you dismiss it as some nonsense. I promise there is value here. All right, tip number one, always thank the bus driver. All right, now you may be asking, what the hell does this have to do with me playing better at Fortnite? And the answer is mindfulness. Mindfulness is a topic that I haven't discussed a lot on this channel, but be prepared to hear about it more often. If you are unfamiliar with the concept, it is basically a fancy word for focusing or being present in the moment. Fortnite is a game that has literally 100 plus things going on that you need to consider each and every game. It is easy to autopilot and not be on the top of playing to the best of your ability. If you have the mental awareness and presence of mind to thank the bus driver before departing every game, it will put you on the right track to being focused for the entire game. A full match of BR can last over 20 minutes, and during that time, it is very easy to lose focus, become mindless, or let your thoughts wander. So at the very least, we may start off in a mindful manner as it is better than trying to gather ourselves mid-match once we are already fighting and wondering why we are playing bad. Tip number two, do not have any desires or attachments always go with the flow. It is very easy to go into a game of Fortnite with a specific objective. For example, take the strategy. I'm going to land at fencing fields, kill the boss, get the medallion and the mythic, then go to the vault, mod my shotgun, and proceed with the rest of the game. This is a solid plan to have. However, when landing in a POI as volatile as fencing, things can get crazy very quickly. Sometimes you have to let someone else start the boss for you. Sometimes you have to disengage when you get third party and fighting Nisha yourself. Other times, you get vault camped and can't even get in. Sometimes the third parties don't stop rotating in and you have to abandon the POI altogether. My point is, having a plan is great, you should basically have a plan for each phase of the game, the beginning, middle, and end. However, it's when those plans start to go bad that you need to go with the flow and just take what the game is giving you in that moment. My ideal loadout is a Frenzy Auto, Striker AR, EMPs, Flowberry Fizz, and Shockwaves. But if I get a Purple Pump with a Thunderburst that has a Sight on it, Clingers, Big Pots, and a Grapple Blade, I will still play that loadout until I can swap out each item for my preferred version. You just have to be fluid with what you can work with. I'll basically play any Shotgun, any AR, any Pistol, any SMG at this point. If I can't find Shockwaves or Grapple Blade, I even been taking crash pads, just using what I can when I can and not being too stuck on any one plan. Tip number three, remain centered focus on the reticle. Every gun has its own reticle, sight, or scope when you're shooting. This is exactly where I like to put my focus of vision when I'm shooting at someone. Normally when I'm playing, I am in scan mode, where my eyes are pretty much anywhere except the center of my screen, always looking for loot or pixels moving, which is the best way to find enemies in the distance. However, once you do engage and start fighting someone, I find it's best to switch to centered mode, where you are looking straight at the center of your screen and trying to line your reticle up with your opponent. I've heard other players say they like to look at the opponent and line them up with the center of their screen, but personally, I do it the opposite way. I'll have some footage on screen right now of what I'm talking about when I'm in centered mode. I'll keep my eyes directly on the reticle if I want to look elsewhere. I move my camera to look there, not my eyes. I want my eyes absolutely glued to the center of my screen so that when I do finally line them up with an opponent, all I have to do from that point is pull the trigger. Tip number four, gun, heals, mobility, then fight. When landing, it is very easy to get distracted amongst the chaos of everyone around you, especially if you hot drop or are in a medallion POI with a lot of potential boss slash henchmen around you. The absolute single most important thing when landing is to acquire a usable weapon of some type. So if the first chest you open has an anvil launcher, you gotta keep looking. Even just a sniper rifle isn't really good enough as it's very tough to finish someone off without headshotting them immediately. Really, any shotgun slash AR combo should get the job done in the early game, substituting the AR for an SMG or pistol if needed. Once you have a weapon or two, getting your shield up to 100 is the next big task. There's absolutely zero reason to go into a fight with any less. Your opponents are very likely gonna be doing everything they can to get their health up ASAP, so you do not wanna enter your first engagement with 150 HP versus their 250. You're just asking to get sent back to the lobby that way. In addition, always try to find some extra carryable heals on top of the 100 you need to use when you first drop in, just so you can heal up if you do get into an unfavorable situation. If you've ever watched my streams, you'll see I do run no heals a fair bit. However, it's rarely in the early portion of the game. It's always after I'm fully kitted and feel confident in my loadout to take out other players and use their heals if necessary. This last one isn't as mandatory as the weapons or shields, and that's to find some type of mobility. The base player in Fortnite really can't do much on their own. If you have no mobility and your opponent has any whatsoever, they will catch you if they want to. This is really an unfavorable position to be in as you want to be the one who is able to dictate the pace of the fight. Reacting to what your opponent wants to do only leaves you playing their game. Mobility doesn't have to be shockwaves or grapple blade either. It can just simply be jump pads, being near a car or truck, or even just a launch pad, especially if you have flow berries. Something that gives you any kind of repositioning option if you do find yourself in a tricky situation. Once you've got all of this, then it's much safer to proceed with your goal of hunting down players or killing the boss and going for the vault. Of course, sometimes you don't get this luxury and an opponent will put you in a tough situation before you can get fully kitted. However, I know plenty of times 
times that I lead myself into these bad situations when I wasn't nearly ready enough supply wise. And if I've made this mistake before, odds are there's others out there who have as well. Tip number five, play your game, not theirs. Fortnite has a ton of different play styles from the W key aggressive push everyone player to the sneaky killer who drops medallions and snipes at you from afar to the camper who just wants to stay alive and doesn't even care about getting kills with everything in between. You have riot shielders, EMP users, people who use bunkers, those who come straight at you and attack with the grapple blade. Play styles are endless and you have to actively identify what your opponent is trying to do to you and not let them while simultaneously making them fall for your own game plan. For example, I'm a shockwave EMP kind of player. I carry these items almost every game. I find it extremely helpful to be able to start a fight with a huge HP advantage when I execute the play properly. The easiest player for me to kill and the reason why I started playing this way is to counter snipers. The reaper is everywhere this season, even post nerf. Typically a sniper is happy to camp behind their rock or cover, maybe stand on top of a roof and just snipe at you. So if you can shockwave above them, rain a couple EMPs down and finish them off with a shotgun shot or two, it can absolutely ruin their day. The best way to counter my play style of doing that to them is these snipers who move around a lot, they make my life very hard. If they are constantly grapple blading from one position to another, using cars and not letting me catch up to them, never staying in one position for very long, it's very tough for me. My strategy relies on someone standing still for at least a second or two, or at the very least not shockwaving and grappling out of their current position. It's very hard to hit an EMP in the air if the opponent is moving sporadically or very fast. If they're standing still, it makes my life a hundred times easier. Notice how I said before, I like them to be behind cover or on top of a building. This is so when I shockwave up, I can just throw the EMP down on them. If, for example, they go inside of a building with cover all around them, now my play doesn't work at all, and maybe I want to run into the building and just shotgun them instead. But this is what you don't want to do. You have to play your game, not theirs. If they have great cover, consider shooting out a few walls. Maybe you can give yourself an opening to throw an EMP inside. You can always get the hit marker indicator to know if you hit them or not, which will then be your sign to push. But what you can't do is just push all willy-nilly and hope to come out on top. This would be playing their game, not yours. No matter what your game plan is, you have to stick to it while identifying what your opponent's game plan is and not playing into their hands. It's a tricky mental game, but it's absolutely necessary if you want consistent success with this game. If you made it this far, please leave a like, share with a friend, and comment below which tip was your favorite today. I have a long list of tips and tricks that I've written just to help myself get better at this game, so there'll be many more videos of this style coming up. Please consider joining our Discord, link is in the description, so you can always be notified when we upload and go live. Subscribe and turn on the bell if you enjoy our content. Love you all, and we'll see you on the next one.